Hey, everybody. Uh, did you know that we have a podcast channel? Do you remember that we do podcasts sometimes? Yeah, it's been like 10 years, but um, we do. So we're, we're podcasting from our uh, apocalyptic nuclear bunker. 10 yep. years in the future now. Society has ended. It's Mad Max. Yep. So. Wait. Yeah. This is a spoiler warning for the entirety of the show Stranger Things from the first season until now. So if you have any interest in watching Stranger Things, stop listening, go watch it, and come back after you watch it. Because we will be talking about the entire show in deep detail. So if you don't want to hear that, then go away. Specifically, up until uh, season four, part one. Right, that's what's out right now. Because yeah, because this is well, someone might listen to this podcast two months, two months from now. Yeah, Um, yeah. Season season four, part two comes out about a week uh, from when we're recording this, so we haven't seen it yet. So yeah, full spoiler from episode season one, episode one, all the way up until um, eleven kills Joyce. Oops. That has not happened. That, That doesn't that that doesn't happen, guys. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, so this podcast is about strangle thongs. You know what I'm saying? Strangle things. Um, you had never seen it up to now. You you said you first tried to watch it years ago and you got bored of it. Yeah, I, I started it when it came out, um, but it didn't really hold my interest. Mm-hmm. But then this time around, you seemed very invested. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, what we did is, you know, to catch Kelsey up. And then also for my own recollective purposes, and it ended up turning into a video, so I guess it all worked out anyway. But we decided to just start from the beginning and just binge watch all the way through uh, until the newest episodes. Um, so just blanket general wise, made up word, uh, what, what are your thoughts? Do, did you like Stranger Things as a whole? Yeah. Yeah? I like it a lot. Hmm. Mm-hmm. What, what do you like about it? Um, I I don't know. I like a lot of stuff about it. I like the aesthetic of the 80s and the clothes and the the synth music. <laughs> the Menacing Eldritch Choir. Yeah, menacing <laughs> Russian Eldritch Choir if, synth if, music place. If you guys haven't, you know, when you watch season four specifically, watch it with subtitles on. Like, they have the most descriptive subtitles for every sound or music that plays. Yeah. It's so funny. It's really funny. I'm like, what is Eldritch music? What does that mean? It's like, it's like, um, what is that? Menacing squelching continues. You know, it's like, <laughs> who, who makes these? <laughs> um, I like the characters. Mm. Do you have a favorite character? That stands out to you as like one that you like. My mine for for me, my two favorite are probably Dustin and Hopper. Mm-hmm. Those are my two favorites. Like whatever scene Dustin is in, um, even just from the beginning, like it's just so funny and it's so he's he's fun to watch. The way he talks to people is really funny. And then you know Hopper has like a Han Solo kind of vibe where he's just like again he's fun to watch because he has that like chaotic good kind of thing going on where he like. He's going to do the right thing and he doesn't care who has a problem with it type of thing, you know. He's punching policemen and security guards and all that stuff. Like, he's he's a cool guy to watch. So those are probably my two favorites. How about you? Um, Yeah, I like them both, too. I like Hopper a lot. Hopper is probably my number one favorite mm-hmm. character. I like him a lot. I think he's a good balance of funny and also, like... Like interesting and complex. Like some of the other characters can come off kind of one note. We've talked about before. Uh, yeah, uh, I think a lot of characters are really just one dimensional. But he's pretty nuanced. There, I feel like there's a lot of depth to his character. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like him a lot, and he's a badass. Mm. And he just beats people up and stuff. It's pretty cool. That's what I'm saying. You know, like he's chaotic good. It's like he, he doesn't care about following the rules. He's just gonna do what needs to be done. You know? I like um, Max a lot, too. Hmm. What about Max do you find interesting? I don't know. I just think she's funny and sarcastic. And she, um, like, Eleven has a personality, but she, like, doesn't talk so much. And she's kind of, like, weird. (laughs) (laughs) Max is, like, a normal girl, a normal person more so than her i feel like she blends into the the boys friend group really well mm-hmm. i don't know i just like her 
Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Like, yeah, especially as the show goes on, I feel like a lot of the characters don't really change much at all. Um, like, um, so I, I'm going to put this podcast up with the video that I make. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you haven't seen my video about it, about Stranger Things, you can watch that. And if you've come from the video, hello. Um, like most of the friend group, as in Mike, Will, and Dust. No, no, no. Sorry. Mike, Will, and Lucas. Um, like throughout the show, they don't change at all. Um, especially Mike. <laughs> like, like Mike is the exact same person when he's 12 that he is when he's like 15 or whatever he is in the next season. And Will. Yeah, and, and Will. And see, Will has gone through so much. So much. The, the dude was kidnapped by a demigorgon for like two weeks or something. He he uh, turned into like a shadow monster puppet. Yeah, he was possessed by the mind flayer, and he still has a little bit left in him. He's like, he has like a tiny little bit eleven powers where he can like sense when there's like a a a, a uh, upside down monster coming. So like he's been through so much, but his personality has not changed at all since the the first episode of the first season. Um, and it's like, I, I don't know. It's so weird that, like, he... I mean, I like him. He's just not a super complex character. Yeah, he's just not interesting. Like, what happens to him is interesting, and it serves as the catalyst for the characters to, like, do stuff. But, like, he he as a character, like, I don't know, man. Like, like uh, number one gets sent to the Upside Down, and he gets, like, superpowers and turns into, like, the Grinch or whatever. But then, and then Will is stuck in the Upside Down for like two weeks and all he gets is like a dumb haircut. You know what I mean? Like, nothing, nothing changes with this kid. Alex thinks Vecna looks like the Grinch. I do. I, I don't see it. But uh, There's a strong resemblance, my dude. That, 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 that tum. said tummies look the same. They both got big old tums. <laughs> Why? But, but really though. And like Lucas, you know, in season one, like Lucas is just kind of this like, I don't know. He's just kind of this annoying little like, no, guys, I want to stay home. And then he's like, I don't like being bullied. And then in season four, he's like, guys, I don't like being bullied. You know, it's like that's like his whole thing. <laughs> he's like doesn't want to be bullied. Yeah. Um, and then also, I think Jonathan really doesn't change at all. I mean, in season four, like he's kind of different because he's friends with Argyle. But he himself as a character is still the same yeah, character. Still the same character. But then you look at Nancy and Steve. And I mean, they're like light, night and day, light and day. Am I okay? Light they're, and day. They're night and day different. Like, you know, Steve starts out season one. He's kind of this like popular douchey good, douchey good. I am. You want to take Oof. a minute to recollect yourself? He's a douchey dude uh, with good hair and tight jeans. You know, and that's that's who he is. And he's Nancy's boyfriend. And Nancy's like, you know, the pretty girl next door. Like, she's really studious and a good girl. But she doesn't want to just be a good girl. She wants to get a little some of that Steve sauce. You know what I'm saying? And Ew. then, and then you know, and then of course, as the show goes on, Steve becomes really cool and funny. And he bonds with Dustin a lot. And they're like best friends. And, um, you know, of course, him and Robin, you know, have a good friendship going as well. And Nancy as well. It's like she's this like, you know, little kind of like, oh, I just wear dresses and do homework. And then she's like shooting shotguns. And she's in season four. She's like, oh, I got guns in my room. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> let's go to my house. You know, <laughs> so she goes through a lot of changes and grows a lot, which I think is very cool to see. And, you know, I guess Dustin also doesn't really change, but he was very interesting from the beginning. And he's one he's one of those him and Hopper, like I said, are two characters that like I don't want to change too much. I, I like them as they are. Yeah. Yeah, he's very charismatic and funny. Yeah, he's just, like, so funny. Uh, the guy who plays him is just such... Is so perfect at being Dustin. It's just... is beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, that brings up another point I talk about in the video, but we've talked about a lot as well, where, like... What's your point, darling? My point is I'm agreeing with what you're saying. Okay. That most characters are one-dimensional. No, like, the point you were going to bring up. Is that what you are going to... Say. Point I was gonna bring up. Yeah. What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> you were saying that brings up another point that I brought up in the video. Yeah, which is that there's too many characters now. Oh, okay. Right, and it's like you know, at first there was a few characters, and a lot of them were one dimensional, but you had, you know, they were. It's almost like in in the first season, even the second season, like the friend group was a character. And then each member of it was just like a piece of it, you mm-hmm. know, um, and together they were a friend group. And then Eleven comes in and they're like, oh, cooties, but she has superpowers. That's cool. Um, but the friend group was the character, not the individual people. And I feel like it's kind of stayed that way. 
And so then in season four, for example, when Lucas is kind of drawing away from them because he wants to be popular. And then it's kind of like, so the friend group isn't even the friend group anymore. And then it really shows just how boring like Mike and Will are mm-hmm. and uh, and Lucas himself as well. Because like watching Dustin do all of his wackadoo science stuff is cool. He's talking to Susie and he's hanging out with Steve and they're they're infiltrating the Russian base under the mall, you know. Um, and that's all like fun to watch. But then whenever Lucas or, or Mike, like M- Mike is so, Mike is so annoying. <laughs> Am I wrong? I I kind of like him in this recent season. Um, what a waste of good cheekbones. That's what I say. <laughs> he's just not super interesting. I mean, well, because like you were saying, um, it feels like there's like so many characters now and so much going on, and I think that that has caused there to like not be as deep of a dive for the certain like main characters like they don't get like a, as good of story arcs or whatever you don't get to learn more about them and their issues and their personalities and stuff like we know like a ton about like Max and her home life and her issues with her family and her brother and her like whatever she's going through but we don't really know that much about Mike or Lucas, or, I mean, or Dustin, really. Um, I guess we do about Will, just because he was, like, the main character of, like, season one and two, basically, or one of the main characters. Like, well, then also his then. his mom and brother are also main, main characters, right. so there's more info with him. Yeah, well, like, with Mike, I mean, I guess I kind of felt that Mike was kind of the main character. Like, Will is the, Will himself is the MacGuffin that everyone's trying to get. Um, and he's he's the person that bad things happen to. But like in season one, Will's like never in the show. He's in the first episode and then like the last episode. What, and then, what is a McMuffin? A McMuffin? Well, kids. A McGuffin. A McGuffin is a, a like film. Well, it's not a film. It's film or just writing. It, it's a storytelling term for like the thing that characters are looking for is the McGuffin. Like, um, you know, we need to find... The the mutagen stuff. It's like Lord of the Rings, it's the ring. Yeah, the ring's kind of the MacGuffin. Although, like, they have the ring, but people are looking for the ring, oh, right. and they and the they're ring. they're trying to take it to Mount Doom. It's a little more complicated than so that, but in Harry but yeah. Potter, it's like the Horcruxes. Yeah, yeah. Like in the in the in the later Harry Potter books, the the MacGuffin is slash are the Horcruxes, Horcruise, if you will. <laughs> um, that like we're looking for this thing. That's the MacGuffin. And Will himself is the MacGuffin of season, well, season one and two, just in a different kind of way in season two. Um, and so he he's kind of the catalyst. I guess to me, I feel like Mike is the main character of season one just because he's the one that finds Elle and they're like best friends. And he's like, yeah, have some egg and waffles. And, and Elle's like, I'm so malnourished. Um, <laughs> but like, but it's, I don't know, like, in the beginning, I get it, because he's, like, 12, right? And so he's, he's 12 years old, he likes D&D, he's tired of being bullied, and he hangs out with Elle. Cool. But then, like, in season four, I don't know, you think, like, the teenage years are the most formative for mm. people, right? That's why, like, you have Nancy, Steve, and Jonathan, well, specifically Nancy and Steve, where, like, you know, yeah, they're in this, like, they're, like, what, 15, 16, sophomore year? So, like, 16 mm. um, at the beginning. And then they grow and mature, and it's like, well, we have to get jobs. Where are we going to go to school? Like, you know, love, sex, relationships, all this stuff kind of plays into it. And now Mike is that same age in season four, and he's still just like, I like L and D and D. Like, nothing's changed, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that is true. Like, I guess, you know, like, Lucas Lucas is sort of trying to be different, although his personality is still like, I don't like being bullied. And that's that's how it was from the beginning of the show. And then Will, even Will, it's like Will's had so much stuff happen to him. You think he would be a more interesting person, but he's just like third string best friend to everybody. Also, we don't even really have the ability to find out how interesting they are because they have such little screen time. Because there's too many characters. That's what I'm yeah. saying. You know, especially in season four. I, I, I talked about this in the video a little bit, but in season three, there's well, – in season one, there are three main groups where you have, like, the friend group and L. Then you got Joyce and Hopper over here. Then you got Nancy, Steve, and Jonathan over here. And that's like the, – there's three groups, and they all come together at the end to save the day and all that stuff. And so with, with only three groups, you know, you everyone gets a lot of screen time. You really get to know everybody more or less, or at least you get to kind of see what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And then by the time you get to season four, there's like seven or eight groups 
um, if you count Joyce Murray and then Hopper as separate, at least for most of the season. So it's like there's like seven or eight different groups of characters. Half of these characters, like, we don't even know, you know? Um, it's like like there's Argyle who's just kind of there as like sort of kind of comic relief be- yeah. because – because uh, Will, Mike, and Jonathan are just so friggin' boring on their own that you need <laughs> you need an extra like Cheech and Chong ripoff kid to be funny, um, and then you have that Eddie guy who's I mean he's kind of interesting and funny I guess, but um, he's kind of I think the weakest part of Nancy, Steve, and Robin. Um, Eddie's just kind of there. And again, like I said, like it's not like we get to find out that much about him other than like what's at face value, what's on the surface, because each group or person hardly gets enough time. And I mean, even when like Nancy and um, Steve and Robin are together, he's not in it a lot of the time because he's like hiding. Right. Most of the season he's hiding. Um, so we not don't unlike get to Will. Find out that much about him. Yeah, I, I said this to you during our morning walk when we took Jenna out. Um, that as I was writing the script for the video, it struck me that there's a very easy way that they could have made um, Eddie, Chrissy, Jason. They could have made all of them like actually mean something, which is. I mean, you know, and like I know in the show, I don't know. Eddie's supposed to be like a super super senior. So he's, he's he's like like twenty eight or something. I don't know how he's supposed to be. He said, <laughs> "They were like, oh, you said you'd graduate last year and the year before that, so that means he's a senior for the third year, which would make him this is like twenty 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 one something like that." Yeah, I don't know exactly. Like maybe they could change that part to make it less creepy about what I'm gonna say. But like for example, so L L nope. So uh, Max is going through this like super angsty phase because she saw her brother die and just the the trauma of dealing with all this stuff that seems to affect no one else but her. Um, and so that's so uh, that's why she breaks up with Lucas in between season three and four. And she's like she's such like a loner dude, you know, listening to her Kate Bush and all that. And it's like if they had made it so that Max is dating Eddie or if like uh, Max maybe Max and Eddie did date because they're like neighbors in the trailer park um, and they had some kind of history together, then like it would make a lot of the events that happen around Eddie, like they would just automatically mean more to us, the audience, because we want to know like what's going on with Max. Oh, she dated this guy. Maybe there's like a scene where Eddie's like, hey, you know, come on, let's hang out like we used to. And then she's like, we're not dating anymore. And then he's like, but I want you back. And so then late th- that night when you see Eddie and Chrissy going into his trailer together, Max sees that and she could be like, wait, what? And then maybe she could be like sitting there angry. She's like, I know we're not together, but I'm kind of jealous because I do like him, but I don't want to let him know because I'm 15 and that's how things work. Um, and then when she, when Chrissy dies and then Eddie has to run away, then there's like so much more complexity there. If it's like, you know, Max is like, well, we have to chase after Eddie to find out if he did it or not. But also I don't want to talk to him, but I mean, I guess I have to, you know, maybe I'm implicated because I'm his ex-girlfriend or current girlfriend, whatever's going on. Um, and then, you know, so then like Chrissy and Eddie and then Max. And that, that would also give Lucas like some weight to him also like trying to like help because he's like, well, I don't like Eddie because, you know, you stole my girlfriend. And then that would give Eddie and Lucas a chance to like talk and have scenes alone together. You know what I'm saying? Like something like that. This is just like quick, you know, napkin math here. But something like that where like Eddie actually means because right now the only relationship he has to anyone is that he's the the hellfire club D &D dm Mm -hmm. for dustin and mike and used to be lucas yeah um but like the only interaction we see with them is that they eat lunch together and eddie's like not even that nice to mike and dustin anyway it's like it's not like they're friends clearly it doesn't there's no feeling of like friendship that they've developed or anything i think they're friends i think he's just kind of a quirky Person. Just like a weird dude. Who kind of comes off kind of adversarial in the way that he, like, monologues about <laughs> things. Conformity, bro. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, I'm saying, like, 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 we don't, sure, I mean, I assume they're friends because they play together, but, like, we as the audience don't really get that feeling mm-hmm. that they're, like, such good friends or, like, that it that it really means something. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, um, 
Or like, you know, so Lucas pulls away from the friend group because he wants to be cool and not be bullied. But if Max was dating slash had dated Eddie, for example, then that would make sense why Lucas is like, I don't really want to do Hellfire Club anymore because I, I fucking hate this guy and whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I hate Eddie. I don't want to see him anymore. Then And, and I, don't, I don't want to be a loser anymore anyway. And then that gives a little more dimension to like the decisions they make. Because as is right now, yeah, it's like Max is just this literal island. That is unrelated to everyone else at the moment. And so is Eddie and so is Chrissy and so is Jason. Um, I talk about this in the video, but it's like most, I'd say about half of the first episode is Chrissy, Eddie and Jason related. But we don't care about them at all. And also the the paper kid, whatever his name oh, was. Oh, uh, Fred. Fred. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's another example, too. Yeah, Fred. Um, but specifically in this case, it's like we have these three new characters that we don't know anything about. We don't care about. But like one of them dies and that that, you know, and then suddenly Jason's real upset about it. And then that implicates Eddie. But it's like we don't care about these people yet. And like like um, when they introduce Max in the show, it's I think it worked really well because the friend group is like, who's this girl who plays video games? And immediately there's like a direct connection to the characters that we care about already. Mm -hmm. But then in season four, it's like here's like six new people. Good luck. You know, it's like we don't yeah. like like we know all we know about Chrissy. She has an eating disorder. All we know about Fred is that he was in a car accident and ran away. I mean, to be fair, we don't need to know that much about them because they sure, sure. die. Sure. Although I, but I, I feel like we knew a little more and cared a little more about Barb. Mm-hmm. Um, and like her death was a direct result of Nancy making a bad decision. Yeah, we care about her because she's friends with Nancy. Right. That's yeah. That's what I'm saying. Whereas in this case with Eddie, Chrissy, and Jason, and, you know, Jason and Eddie become very prominent characters in season four. Um, and it's like, like, I don't care about Jason and his satanic panic thing going. I don't care. And, <laughs> and like, Eddie's running away and it's like, oh, we have to save Eddie. But, like, me as the audience member is like, I don't care if Eddie lives or dies. <laughs> like, like, I have no reason to care either way. Um, I just think personally for me that it becomes harder and harder for me to become invested in new characters um as a show goes on mhm cuz i feel like the cast is already set and like i don't there's only so much caring for them that i can have to go around i guess i don't know yeah i've always been like this with shows when they try to introduce new characters in later seasons it's just really hard for me to connect with them emotionally i mean i totally agree like that's one of the reasons why i think um a lot of people love and still love like uh, Breaking Bad, for example, because Breaking Bad is a very small cast and some characters come and go, but the cast is usually kept very manageable. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, but then Stranger Things, I say this in the video. Um, so, you know, I, I, I keep saying that. So that in case you uh, listen, you saw the video first and then listen to this, you're not like you're just repeating what you said. Yeah, I'm kind of repeating some of the same points. Um, it's like Stranger Things is kind of turning into Riverdale a little bit where it's just like. There's so many random new people showing up just out of nowhere and then like all these random plot threads that don't really come together much at all and a lot of like very convenient coincidences. Um, it's kind of – it just – you you said this when we started watching. You're like – after the first or second episode, you said um, like, oh, it just feels so different now. Yeah. You know, the way it's shot or the way it's written or structured, like something feels different. And, and season four just kind of feels like a Netflix teen drama. Mm-hmm. In a way, I don't know. Like season one and two specifically, they kind of felt like uh, I don't know how many of these you've seen, Kelsey, but it kind of feels like '80s adventure movies, like Goonies or ET or things like this. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, I've seen ET, but I don't know if you remember. <laughs> but, Not much. Um, I saw Goonies just a, a few years ago, but I watched it again on like Netflix or something. Um, but but in the '80s, there was this this string of like of like, I don't know, it's like kids or like family adventure movies um, that they don't really do anymore. And season one and two feel like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Season three, it starts to kind of feel like a Disney Channel movie. (laughs) Or what did you say? Austin Powers? Yeah. Feels like an Austin Powers movie. Like Russian spycraft sneaking around stuff. And then, oh, we're going to use the truth serum on you to interrogate you. And oh, no. And then yeah, the the magic elevator that the little girl figures out, but then suddenly they can't use again, even though she opened the door once already, but okay. And then, yeah, season four is just like, I don't know, it's like, it feels like Outer Banks or something. It feels like, like a Netflix teen drama. Um, and like, as you'd think that like as the, I think Harry Potter does a good job of as the characters grow up, 
the stories mature. Yeah. And the overall feeling matures until you get to like the last two movies or the last, you know, book. And then it's just it's dark. Everyone's dying. Yeah. You know, super emo, like it's whatever. Um, this show, I don't know. It's almost like the first two seasons are like handled in a more mature way. Because then, like I said, season three is like a Disney Channel movie. Like the plot is not too different than like Xenon Girl of the 21st Century. <laughs> um, and then season four, it's just like some weird... I don't know. It's like it's super serious with L, and then it's like a Cheech and Chong movie over here, and it's just like. I was gonna say it feels like the stakes are rising, but the stakes have always kind of been high. Yeah, I, I think you know you're right. I think the the general the, the the stakes of what's happening definitely are getting bigger. Yeah, because now it's like oh the the commander of the mind flare dude, um, and he has like literal psychic powers. It's not just shadow magic anymore. Like those are bigger. Things are getting bigger and bigger, but I feel like the overall vibe of the show is almost, like, less mature in a weird way. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe yeah, it's, just me. it's definitely different. And, uh, yeah, it just feels like it's losing some of its magic that made it more mm. unique, like, more itself. I understand that we're probably having popular, unpopular opinions about this because, like, everyone loves season four. I guess. Apparently. Yeah. I do like it. I mean, it was very watchable. I just... Because we benched it all. Mr. Bob. Bob! You want to come in? We have Bob in the studio, folks. Bob's Bob in the again. studio, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh, and he's out. And he's gone. Bob has left the building. <laughs> Bob! You want to say hi? Bob, come here. I hope it picks him up. <laughs> I want to hold him up to the mic. Mr. Bob! You want to say hi? Mr. Bob. Pick him up. Bob is the gold the darned cutest cat. Let me see if I can pick him up. Hold on. Hey, Bob. No, no. Okay. He's behind the booth. Okay. He's not going to. Right. Well, as we were saying. Sorry. What were we saying? I interrupted you. Um, oh, I thought it was really watchable and still really good. It's just we binged it all at once, so like... We watched the first season like a week or less after we watched yeah, or before maybe, maybe we like watched three the or four days, season. Yeah. We watched it all in a really like compressed span of time, so it's easier to see like the the trends and the patterns and the changes and all that stuff. Um, and like I, you know, I get that shows change over time. I mean, that's I feel like that's part of what Hopper's speech at the end of season three is about. Where he's like, things can't stay the same forever. You got to grow. You got to change. And it's going to maybe it's going to be painful. But in the end, I, I wonder if that wasn't the showrunners, the, 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 the Duffer brothers, um, the Fluffer Nutters. Um, if it wasn't them also saying that to us, that like, oh, things are going to be a little different going on, which is fine. It's fine. But I just feel like the choices that they made for season four were at the detriment of what could have been a really great it it almost feels like they're trying to do like that Marvel thing where it's like they have so many characters doing so many things and they're all going to come together in a big old end game battle or something. You know what I mean? Like I said this to you the other day, but like with with a show like uh, Game of Thrones, for example, right from the get go, Game of Thrones is like there's a whole bunch of people. Here you go. Here's like 10 different groups of people that you need to care about. And like it was like that from the beginning. So that was our expectation. It's like, oh, okay, there's a lot of people in this show. Um, but like I said earlier, with Stranger Things, you know, it started off with relatively few. And then it just kept going more and more to the point now where it's like, yeah, like people barely get any screen time. And, and you know, we don't we never get a chance to learn much about any of these characters, really. And, and then we're supposed to care about what happens to them, I guess, you know? Yeah, some people just feel like... I don't like dumb down versions of themselves. I don't like Joyce. I don't know. I feel mm. like she went from being like so clever and so like driven and stuff in like the first couple seasons. And then this season, she's kind of just like Murray's like foil to bounce his humor off of. She mm. doesn't seem like she does like that as much. I don't know. I guess she's going to Alaska to help Hopper, but I don't know. Something about her character just feels different to me. You know, I get it, yeah, because in season one, in season one, she's this kind of very nervous, very neurotic mom, and that's because her kid is missing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it totally makes sense. And then she starts to think that she's crazy, and then, you know, like, Will's talking to me through the lights. I know it sounds crazy. I get it. And, and she's like... 
And she's like, I'm going to find my son no matter what. That's like her, her drive. And it makes sense. You know, like when Hopper's like, I'm going to go to the upside down and get Will back. And she's like, no, I'll go. He's my son. You stay here. Um, and so that was, yeah. And then she's, she, she figures out the lights. She puts the, the letters on the wall. Like, yeah, she's very driven and very clever. And she kind of figures these things out despite all the opposition. And then, yeah, season two, uh, you know, because Will is possessed now and she's season two. She's very she's coddling Will because she's like, I just got you back. Um, and then Will's like, guess what? I'm a shadow monster. And she's like, oh, my goodness, Yu-Gi-Oh was real. And then and then like, you know, and then again, she's so determined to like get the monster out of Will. So, again, it kind of makes sense. But then as the show goes on, it's like they just they just need to find reasons for Joyce to be neurotic about something. <laughs> you know what like I mean? the magnets. Yeah. She's like, oh, the magnets fell off. Or then like in in, uh, in season three, what's her thing? What is it in season three? It's the it? magnets. Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, right, right. Yeah. The ma- yeah, I, I, I thought that was season four for some reason. Uh, yeah. In season three, it's like, dude, the magnets fell off. And then, it, you know. Now, on the one hand, I said this when we were watching. On the one hand, it strikes me as hilarious that like even by season three, when Joyce says, like, something's weird, everyone's like, why would you think something's weird? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not like we saved the world twice or anything. Yeah. Um, and season four, I think they kind of fixed that because as soon as Eddie, like, tells them something happened and then Dustin's like, oh, honey, sit down. <laughs> 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 We've been here before. Um, but, yeah, it's like she just needs to find things to kind of obsess over. And then season four, I mean, I don't know. I, I find Murray and Joyce's plot thread to be very silly. I think it's funny. I think he's mm. really funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just... I understand that there has to be, like, some comic relief in a show that is this dark and serious a lot of the time. But mm-hmm. it just feels so, like, wacky and zany compared <laughs> to, like, how it used to be. Yeah, v- very Disney Channel original movie feeling. Like, the first season, second season was, like, pretty dark, pretty somber, pretty serious. And now it's like Murray's doing like kung fu and I don't know. Yeah, it's almost, I mean, now obviously, I like I said, I love Hopper and I love Dustin. Mainly because, you know, Dustin is clearly the comic relief, but he's capable. He's not just an idiot. And then Hopper is very, very capable with some occasional comic relief, much like Han Solo was there to kind of balance out very serious Luke Skywalker. Yeah, I think Hopper's funny. Yeah. And so, like, we already have two... Uh, comic reliefs. Now, Hopper in season four, he's not really in a position to be much of a comic relief, which I totally get. Yeah. Um, but it's like, yeah, you have Dustin, and then there's Murray, and then there's also Eddie, and then there's also Argyle. There's like so many comic reliefs that, yeah, it's almost just like, it's like too silly sometimes, I feel like. Yeah. And now, I mean, yeah, I, I do comedy for a living, so I love a good comic relief, but it's like there has to be a balance to it. And it's kind of like every friend group and every thing is like, I don't know. It's like half the cast is just there to say dumb jokes. And then the other half the cast is like super serious all the time. You know, I don't yeah. know. I feel like there's not much of a of a balance. And, you know, in, in the way that I was saying Mike didn't uh, change over the season, it's, it's like in the first three seasons, all the characters, they're supposed to like learn these lessons and sort of grow as people and kind of change over time. Like, oh, we have to grow up now because the world is dark and whatever. But it's kind of like, I don't know. There's just it's like. It's like they have to keep relearning the same things over and over again. Like um, like Mike is getting bullied in season one, and then Elle is like, what's bullying? I don't understand that, but I'll break his arm for you. And then Mike's like, cool, you broke the bully's arm. And then in season four, Mike watches the entire roller rink <laughs> bully Eleven and throw milkshakes on her. And then the DJ's like, wipe out, loser. I'm 25. I don't know why I care. Um, and then... And then Eleven, you know, hits the girl in the face with a roller skate. And then Mike's like, what did you do, Elle? I can't believe you would fight a bully like that, even though that's how our friendship was totally formed in the first place. Yeah, as if she hasn't, like, murdered people in front (laughs) of your eyes. Right. She made people's brains explode in the lab in season one. (laughs) And then Mike's like, I can't believe you would hit a girl with a roller skate. Like, come on, dude. I feel like it sounds like we're being really harsh. Like, we both really like this show a lot. Right. I don't want people to think we're just, like, Mm. bashing on it. But... Like, we're so invested in it, and that's why we're talking about this stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's like, if if we didn't, if we hated the show, like, really, really hated it, 
like I wouldn't make a video. We wouldn't even bother making a podcast about it because it's like, yeah, that was dumb. Goodbye. You know, um, it's like, yeah, I think the reason why the bad parts stick out to us so much is because we really liked the first two seasons a lot. So like, the third season was kind of like, OK, this is a little bit silly. And then the fourth season just stands out as so to us stands out as just like so not what we wished it was, I guess. Some parts of it I really like. Mm. Well, what were your favorite parts of season four? Um, I really like the the big baddie of this season. Oh, you like Vecna? Yeah, I think he's cool and scary. And um, With his Voldemort nose? Yeah, his lack of nose. Lack of nose, yeah. And I think it's interesting that now they finally have an enemy that like seems like it's like intelligent and like humanoid and yeah stuff. they've basically been like animal like up to yeah. now yeah um so i think that's interesting and scary because mm. he has he is like human or was human so he has like human intelligence and stuff and mm. like crazy powers and he looks really cool like the practical effects of his character is like so cool mm-hmm. um so i like him i think he's cool <laughs> what did you like about this season alex Oh, I was going to say something. Uh-oh. If it's important, it'll come back to you. Yeah, that's true. That's what my mommy always said. Um, hmm. I mean, I mean like, like I, I, I liked a lot of it enough to, like, you know, keep watching, and I was invested in what happened, which makes the stuff I didn't like stand out so much. But, like, something that really stood out to me is something I really, really like. I'm trying to think of what what stuff to me is like particularly good. <laughs> You're not helping, okay? I mean, you can definitely tell that the budget is very high this season. Um, there's a lot of cool effects, a lot of. Uh, Especially, that's one thing. Remember going back and watching season one, and it was kind of like, oh, these this CG is rough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? it, it wasn't amazing. wasn't wasn't the best. It was older, lower budget. I get it, but this season, you know, like there's a lot of there's a lot of cool uh, special effects going on. What do I like? Well, like I said, I mean, I, I always like Dustin and like Hopper. Although Hopper is kind of less funny in this season for obvious reasons given where he is and what he's doing he's in space he's literally in space right now i don't know like let's see that nancy just like cannot keep her pants on for any guy <laughs> you know what i'm saying no just for the same well just, just the guys. same too she passes between steve and jonathan so much like without breaking up with the other one first she's one of those girls who can just like never be single for a while like she just can't do it you know and that's what your favorite part one of your no no i just something that came to my mind hmm Mike's cheekbones are pretty cool. Nancy's jaw. She's got a Chad jaw, dude. True. She could, like... That girl could sip peanut butter through a straw. I don't know. Like, with season four... Because I'm just, like, so invested at this point that it's like, yeah, like, I want to know what's happening. And, I mean, I, I do like the overall... The overall story of... You mentioned Vecna. I do actually like Vecna as a concept. I think he looks very silly. But I like the concept... I think he looks silly? I think he looks like the Grinch. He looks like Jim, he does not Jim look Carrey. Like the, Grinch the Grinch does not have tentacles all over him. He he's he's emo Grinch. Okay. He no, but like just the Grinch. But I, <laughs> the Grinch is very emo, isn't he? Yeah. I hate happiness and Christmas. <laughs> but like the idea of Vecna, where it's like you know, what if there was a test, uh, one of the test subjects, um, who was sort of sent to or went to the Upside Down. And was there for years and years and years and years. And it's like, what would happen to them? Like, I like that concept. I think the way they executed it is a bit questionable. Um, but the concept of who Vecna is and why he is Vecna um, is cool. It's a cool idea. It's something that, you know, I guess, yeah, you'd always wonder, like, what happened to any of the other? All we know about is 11 and 8. Mm-hmm. And then we learn that, like, everyone else kind of died, I guess, um, which is kind of a cheap cop out, I think. But whatever. But one of them survived. I don't know. It's like it's a cool idea who Vecna is. I think the overall uh, sort of feeling of and his powers. I mean, I guess like his his power is literally like teen angst is his power. Um, 
but like just the idea of he's kind of this Freddy Krueger sort of dude where it's like he he finds what you feel most guilty about and he's like, oh, you did this bad thing. That's why you deserve to die. It's uh, definitely a, an homage to Nightmare on Elm Street because the, the guy who plays Victor Creel is the original Freddy Krueger. Is he? Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I did not know that. I watched a video earlier about all the special effects and mm. makeup and stuff that they did. Like his eyeballs? Yeah, and, and Vecna and stuff. And mm. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah, there's definitely <clears throat> influences there. Sure, and, you know, that's fine. You know, taking reference, taking influence is totally fine. I, I, I think the basic idea of kind of what Vecna does and then how he became that way I think is cool. Um, I guess it's weird that that would happen to him and no one else and, like, where – how – the the mechanics of certain things, the details are a little bit like, I don't think they thought it through enough. But the basic idea of Vecna is pretty cool. Um, and I mean, in, in the cheesiest action movie way, I kind of like sort of how Hopper like escapes and all that. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's yeah, it, it's like a I don't know, it's like a nine, it's like Speed or it's like an action movie from the nineties or something. But it's kind of cool just seeing how he does it. And, you know, gets the chains off and then he has to do the snowmobile. Like, that's pretty cool. I like seeing a good ass whooping. Yeah. You know, like, he's, he's someone you want to root for. You know, he's good. And, like, the the complexities of, like, the prison guard and how that plays off of Hopper is, is uh, you know, interesting as well. Mm-hmm. How it's, like, um, they're both, like, Hopper is, like, chaotic good. And then the prison guard is kind of, like, totally neutral, it seems like. He doesn't care about Russia, but he doesn't really care about Hopper either. Um, but they have to help each other reluctantly. Like that that's an interesting dynamic, I think. Um yeah, the upside I, down looks really cool this season. Yeah, you know, that's another Yeah, it's, well like it's the like expanded so much. Like the first season it's just like little like tunnels or whatever. Is that the second season? Uh, yeah, well first season is the forest. Yeah. Um and then uh Joyce's house or whatever. Yeah, and then second season is is the the tunnels. But now it's just like a whole world it's just the town yeah yeah well, yeah, yeah i was just when i said the the budget's really high like also like vecna's lair mm-hmm. you know the place that like max the and house. nancy go yeah. like the sort of deconstructed house that's like floating through time um that looks cool yeah like that that looks really really cool um I and mean, you know I, I was saying this we were both saying this while we watched it like i'm kind of surprised there's been a couple stranger things video games like like mobile games or like a strategy type of thing whatever but it's like like the world of Stranger Things, all the lore, the upside down, the 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 science facility, the gateway, all that stuff like that. Like, would this not be the greatest Resident Evil game of all time? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Or some sort of like survival horror game? Yeah, like Dead Space or, or some kind of yeah, some kind of survival horror first person shooter type of game. Like, just you know, you're like you're going through Hawkins Lab, you find the gate, you're in the upside down, you know, you're fighting uh, the the mind flare looking monster. There, like, there's so many. Even if it just followed the show, like, there's so many perfect like set pieces and scenes in the show that would be like amazing boss battles in Resident Evil. Like at, at the end of uh, season two, when um, L is trying to close the gate and then Hopper's like shooting all the demi dogs. Yeah. Like that would be such a cool like you know uh, keep her alive while she does the thing type of boss battle, or yeah trying to like fight Vecna as like like it'd be so cool. Like I don't know like the the show has such a high budget. It's like it, it season four was like thirty million dollars per episode or something. Mm, Twenty seven yeah something like that yeah. So it's like couldn't they just ask Netflix for like an extra 10 million and give it to Capcom or something and be like, make a not Resident Evil game yeah. with all of this. Because it'd be so cool. Oh my goodness. Playing Steve and Nancy shooting guns and stuff. Yeah, it'd be really cool. And it's like, I mean, the 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 iconography is there. The lore is there. Like, it's totally, this is, this is the greatest game ever. I'm just, I mean, the show's been out for uh, five years total, I think. Six. Six years? It's about 20, yeah, it came out in 2016. 2016. So it's like they've had six years. I don't know. Maybe by the time season five comes out, maybe they – because I know it takes time. It doesn't just come out of nowhere. But it's like, I mean, two or three-year dev cycle with like a – either the Capcom or, or Ubisoft or something. Like, man, you could make a great game. Um, I'd play it. Yeah. There's a lot of really cool settings. That's probably one of my favorite parts of the show as a whole is all of different really cool settings and the the 80s aesthetic and costumes and everything it's very immersive like it doesn't feel like a show about a time period like it feels like it actually takes place in the time period 
Yeah, especially the earlier seasons, I feel like. Like, yeah, it it, it almost just feels like a lost show from the 80s. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and season four um, especially really hammers home the point that, like, you could wear literally anything in the 80s. <laughs> anything. Bright neon short shorts. Like, what, it didn't matter. Whatever. Plaid. You could wear anything you want. Mm-hmm. Like, when people think of the 80s... I think people, they specifically think of, like, late 80s, like, flash dance kind of stuff, uh, which like, is... Like, like, warmers and yeah, stuff? Yeah, which is a lot of what season four has, mm-hmm. uh, especially, like, when they're at the, uh, the roller rink, mm-hmm. you see how the, all, the, all the teens are dressed. Um, but even, like, the early 80s, like, you know, season one, which is really more evocative of the late 70s, I guess. Um, yeah, it's just, like, so well done. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, like, that's, like, the best, the best part really, is, like, the setting. That's one thing I think Netflix does really well. Like, storytelling, characters, whatever aside, like, they're really good at building sets and costumes and, like, immersing you. Like, like Bridgerton's yeah, Bridgerton really good at that, too. Like that too. You know, yeah. like, like you know, whatever your thoughts are on Bridgerton is cheesy, whatever, but it's, like, it looks really good. Mm-hmm. You know? And you really, it really feels like a period piece. Um, so that's, that's all. Yeah, I mean, overall, just want to reiterate, like Kelsey said, you know, we liked it. Yeah, we love the show. Despite the last hour, <laughs> if it's fake. No, we do actually, like, you know, we like it so much, and that's why the bad parts kind of stick out. Do you have any other thoughts to add, darling? <laughs> um, I mean, I'm excited. I know, because uh, part two, well, see, this is going up, I don't know, Sunday or Monday or something, probably. Um, so I guess part two will be out a few days after this comes out. We might do another podcast about it. Yeah, maybe just a quick follow up. Yeah. Um, and I know season five is the last season, so I am I am curious, like what they're working towards, because the I mentioned this in my video a lot, not so much in this podcast, but like the lore that they're establishing in season four is far removed from everything they've established <laughs> so far in the show. So like. How are they, like, what, what What are they working towards? But, yeah, so excited to see where it goes. Excited to see how season four ends. Oh, uh, wait. What? Yeah. Do you have any predictions for deaths at the end of season four? Oh, yeah, because they said, prepare for some deaths. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Murray is going to die. I can see that, yeah. Um, I think it's going to happen, like, you know, Hopper, Joyce, and Murray, because, uh, you know, at the end of the, the part one, they get Hopper out. He stabs the Demogorgon, and Hopper and uh, Enzo, slash not Enzo, whatever his name is, um, they are out. So it's going to be, you know, them two and uh, Joyce and Murray are going to be escaping. Enzo will probably die, too, or maybe. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. I'm, I'm willing to bet that uh, Enzo dies and then... Also, Murray dies, and Murray's going to die in a similar way to the way Bob died, where he's going to, like, hold the fort while Joyce and Hopper escape. Mm-hmm. Be- and the reason I think this is because, so, near the end of season four, Murray just kind of, like, achieves his, like, peak self. Yeah. Where he's, like, he's, like, a karate expert. Yeah, he's, like, fighting he's five a, dudes at once. Yeah, he's a Russian expert. He's infiltrating, you know, this prison. Like, he's done all this stuff, and it's, like... I feel like this is the perfect point for him to go out on like a high note Mm -hmm. where he's like, yeah, I'm a karate master. Yeah. You know, I was right about the commies and all that stuff. And then he, his death allows Joyce and Hopper to escape. That's how I think it's going to happen. And Enzo as well, probably, because how could he be in the show? I don't know. Or maybe Enzo kills Yuri and he becomes Yuri. Something like that. Whoa. He, like, takes over Yuri's, like, fish and tackle, whatever it's fish called. Fish and fly. Fish and fly. There you go. Um, and I think I could see Max dying. We talked about that a little bit. But she almost did, and she didn't. Yeah, I know. I know. I wonder if that's not a sort of misdirect where it's like, all right, you figured it out, but then somehow she's going to die anyway. I don't know. Um, I can see any of the minor or characters dying, like Eddie, Jason. Yeah. Um, I could see Jason dying, too. Hopefully not Robin, because I like her. But yeah. I kind of feel like the shorter amount of time the person has been in the show, the more, like, on the chopping block they are. I mean, like, part of me hopes that they downsize the cast a fair bit for season five, mm-hmm. just so it's... Like we talked about in this podcast, it's more cohesive. It's more streamlined. 
um, fewer groups of people so we get more time with them. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, minor characters are always hit and miss. Like, I don't think Eddie fits into the friend group very well. So like, not that I hope he dies, but it's like, even if he lives, it's like, I hope he's not like a main, main character in season five, just cause like, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like he vibes well with everyone else. Mm. Um, who else is there? I, I can see Jason dying. I feel like, yeah, cause he, sure. he'll be all about the satanic panic and then Vecna will like get him or something. And then he'll be like, you know, you were right or something like that. We left off with Nancy in a perilous position in the Upside Down with Vecna. Right, because she's riddled with guilt about Barbara. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I guess I guess I could see Nancy dying, although there's there's not many like women characters in the show, so I think if they got rid of any of them, it would kind of reduce the balance a bit. Mm-hmm. There's like a lot of dudes in this yeah. show. Um, how about you, Kelsey? We know there's going to be deaths. Who do you suppose? Like I said, I feel like any of like the more tertiary characters can die. Eddie, mm. Jason, Argyle, Argyle. <laughs> um, uh, what's his name? We were just talking. Murray, mm. um, the the guard guy. Mm-hmm. Um, as for like more main characters, I don't think it'll be any of the main five kids. Mm-hmm. Like eleven. Lucas, oh yeah, no, it can't be eleven. Um, Dustin, Mike, or Will. I don't think that it would be any of them. Yeah, just because they're they're just so core to the yeah. the show. Even though, like we said in the podcast, on their own, most of them are quite boring. But I think as a friend group, they're like the heart of the show. It's not going to be Hopper because they are. Could you imagine? We already assumed he was dead at the end of season three. The and... biggest fake out of all time. Yeah. You thought he was dead? Just kidding. He's alive. Just kidding. Um, I guess, yeah, it could be Max, could be Robin, could be Steve. That'd be crazy. Yeah. They killed off Steve or um, Jonathan or mm. someone like that. I could see Jonathan dying just because i feel like he doesn't do much of anything in mm-hmm. the show now like in season one you know he helped with barbara and all that and season two he was kind of just like a worried older brother and then you know now in season four it's like he doesn't really do much of anything really yeah so i could see him dying um in some way like with death yeah some Trying to save someone or something. Trying to help. Something with Will, Will. maybe. Yeah. Uh, I could see that. I feel like you could lose Jonathan and then it would have an emotional impact, but it wouldn't, like, impact the show too much. Yeah. In, like, an irreversible kind of way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'll be interested to see. You know, I I read that the the final episode is, like, almost three hours long. It's, like, two and a half, two forty-five, something like that. So, um, yeah. All right. So we'll just have to see what happens. When Stranger Things Part 2 comes out on July 1st on Netflix. Only on Netflix. Thanks for listening, everybody. I hope we enjoyed it. Like I said, we'll probably do a follow-up on this just because we're... I hope we enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you all enjoyed it. We'll probably do a follow-up after Part 2 comes out just to kind of talk about our thoughts about stuff and things. Yeah. Um, if you haven't seen my video about Stranger Things, give that a watch. It's, it's more of a video I say type. It's not, not the same uh, as the usual ones. More like my Squid Game video, if you like that one. Um, so check that out. And uh, yeah, you know, subscribe to the podcast. Share it with your friends. Uh, send Write in the comments what you think. What's your theories? Did you like the show? Did you like the show? Who's your favorite character? Yeah. Who do you think's going to die? Okay. Thanks again, everybody. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye bye. 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 Bye.